Hi, I'm Emmy. And I was, am, and will likely continue to be James. And welcome back to The Bestiary Monster Manual A through Z. And James, what are we continuing to talk about today? Well, we're carrying on with our segment uh, on the demons segment in the Monster Manual. We're upgrading from the uh, very lowly creatures that we talked about last time, and we're starting to get into some actual real serious challenge ratings. Uh, Starting off with uh, Big Orange, Very, Very Mean, it's the Balgura. Um, Essentially take an orangutan and infuse it with the brutality and ferocity and just sheer um, powerful destructive force of chaos that the abyss is. And uh, you get this, dude. You know, it's such a fascinating artistic choice for me, looking at this guy just visually, uh, to take an orangutan and make it awful. Because orangutans, they just hang around in trees and eat fruit. But this guy is so terrifying looking. He looks like something to me out of those, the art of the original old pulpy really kind of brutal, bizarre Tarzan books. Oh, like the kind of, you know, I was shot down on a distant island and it's full of natives and scary things. Yeah, just super sad and racist. (laughs) Yeah. There's so much character to this guy. We're, like we were saying, we've taken a big leap up in challenge rating here. And it really shows with how complex this guy looks. There's intelligence behind his eyes. He's decorated himself he's wearing jewelry he has trophies on him yeah there's there's a little nod to i think every part of what has gone into the creation of this particular demon in the artwork uh as you say he's got like a little trophy there hanging off his lower lip you can see the intelligence but also the ferocity the strength obviously in the in just kind of the hulking form i mean have you ever seen eyebrows that muscular no, no. He those eyebrows move his whole face. They just that's where the control is. They just shudder it all up and down. <laughs> Coming back to um how demons work and are interwoven to each other. Unlike devils, which we'll talk about, of course, when we reach that entry, but devils have a uniform look. When you see a devil, you know what they're going to look like. They they all kind of have a motif, a theme, if you will. But with demons. I mean, they are... All over the place. Yeah, they're complete and utter chaos. None of them look even all that similar. The art styles between a Dretch and a Balgara, they are nothing alike, even though they are made of the exact same stuff. And that chaos is really personified here with this guy. Apples Uh, and oranges in that the Dretch is green and the Balgara is orange. uh Aha! It's a color pun. (laughs) Um, But yeah, Yeah. looking at this guy's stats, we've taken a big jump up. This is a challenge rating five. Yeah, Uh, and and that's on his own. These guys, according to the entry for them, tend to be like pack hunters. Um, And despite their impressive size and strength, they're quite stealthy. They have a plus five to their stealth. Can Um, you imagine this thing hiding behind a tree? They can make a running leap out from wherever they're trying to ambush you from. They if, uh, get features of barbarian rage in, in terms of making reckless attacks. They're spellcasters as well. Yes, and uh, this is a fun thing that I know, flipping through this, that I was noticing in the Monster Manual, is that if you have a demonic spellcaster, what their stat is they're using for spellcasting... Up in the air. It seems to be almost completely at random. This guy, this giant personification of the Abyss's rage, he uses wisdom to cast spells. 14 wisdom. Okay, sure, why not? It's the Abyss, it's infinite, who knows? Uh, Yeah, he can, uh, he's got Reckless Attack, Running Leap, and he can cast uh, Entangle Phantasmal Force, Disguise Self. And invisibility. Imagine, like, a pack of these things just invisible and waiting for you to walk into their trap. It's It's horrifying. It's terrifying. 
Especially, again, stealth. It, as loud as this guy looks, he's got a plus five. So he might be waiting around the corner behind a rock of the, invis of the abyss invisible. Um, this guy uses D6s and D10s when he wants to smack at you. He's got a multi-attack. His Three armor attacks. class is 15, using just his natural armor alone. His speed is 40. He's got a climb speed. We really hit into the intimidating part where from once you graduate up, they just get a little bit spookier. Yeah, and in terms of uh, toughness, only, you know, on average 68 HP, so not amazingly tough. I think these guys are much more focused on just sheer aggression and power than staying power, necessarily. But, uh, yeah, pretty pretty intimidating. Um, but speaking of kind of the wide disparity that you get between different types of demon, um, the shadow demon... This guy, you know, flipping through again. Really this interesting. Guy, he's fascinating. He might be one of my favorite entries here of your your basic demons just because it is very different. So this is a demon that wasn't able to return to the abyss properly, so it's kind of stuck in between. It didn't evolve this way. It didn't get promoted. It didn't become or change into this. It became this specifically because of mortal and material intervention yeah. so that's and, weird and because of that interference it's possible maybe even likely that it might be like bound in service to someone or something um you know i like that in in the artwork because they are sort of incorporeal you've got not only that sort of uh, semi-translucent quality that we can see in the wings and the body kind of like they're coming, you know, sort of uh, forming out of shadow or out of uh, out of nothing even um, and then yeah, just with those long lithe limbs and that expression that, I don't know, there's kind of a cold fury behind that, that I think if I were a demon locked out of my home plane of existence, I might be feeling as well this guy has one of the higher intelligences we've encountered so far. This guy's got an intelligence of 14, wisdom 13, charisma 14. So he's thinking, he's seeing. Whatever has trapped him here, he's trapped in such a state that he can plot, which is hmm. not something you necessarily universally see across demons, and it really does show here. He's clearly making eye contact with the person looking at the book here. Um, he looks like he's in tatters. He's kind of fallen apart. His challenge rating's fallen, so this mm -hmm. does start to display in the stats as well. But he's got a challenge rating of four, um, so he's probably not as powerful as he was. This is probably something that was more powerful that's trapped here. Yeah. Um, and he's... Oh God, those resistances are gross. Yeah, and very much built around uh, kind of ambush uh, and like sort of hit and run tactics i think because of that incorporeal nature you know sort of fade out of the shadows strike resist any damage that comes back your way and then fade away again uh you know ready to repeat and strike from the shadows again um of course you know does have some weaknesses light sensitivity as you might expect from something kind of made of shadow but depending on where, you know, this thing is smart enough not to fight you in a place where it's going to be subject to those weaknesses if it can help it. Yeah, if it can help it, it's definitely going to be using itself, its incorporeal nature and the darkness to its advantage. But like you were saying, I really like the roleplay perspective of maybe meeting this guy. You're less likely to meet him on the abyss. Uh, so I mean, this there's, is, yeah. Yeah, this is something that you're actually more likely to experience on the material plane, unlike a lot of these guys. And yeah. so this guy is got some mythology and lore to him about why he got there and what his motives and means are for why he wants to get free. So this yeah, guy I seems mean, like a lot of fun. Maybe there's potential there for there to be a kind of bargain made, like you help me get back to the abyss, I'll help you, you know defeat whoever it is imprisoned me here kind of thing you know th 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 there's flexibility and, and compared to just the sheer aggression and ferocity of something like the Balgara, there is a bit more interesting potential for a bit of for a bit of role play for a bit of nuance with this guy absolutely absolutely all right and then we're moving just right over to the Vrock. It's yep. going to be the next entry here this guy he he eats he's for hunting He's, mm -hmm. he's for chasing you down and eating you. 
Uh, and he's got the chompers to do it. Look, he's got a beak and teeth. It's kind of uh, described as a humanoid meets a vulture meets probably a, a whole host of other minor disgusting things. Like, not only is this guy able to sort of swoop in, screech, and stun uh, you as a target before descending on you and trying to tear you to pieces, it's got these, like, spores that it can spread using its wings. And I I think, actually, considering the artwork, for something that I think is supposed to be quite gross, there's a certain almost elegance to it. There's something about the way he's built. He looks better put together than a lot of the other demons we've encountered. His wings do seem to have function. He seems to be able to inhabit himself naturally. The color is actually quite beautiful. He looks shiny. He almost looks soft. I mean, I think it's the sort of probably like the the, the smooth lines in the outwork and sort of the detail in the feathers that kind of make us look at that and go, ooh, it's actually quite nice and pretty. But actually, you know, then you look at the facial expression and just yeah. that sort of... Yeah. Yeah. What are those guys from Skeksis? Oh, the Skeksis. Yeah, it kind of, it's kind of got like that oh, kind of face. Yeah, that, that clear vulture interpretation happening yeah. here on the head. Going back to what he can do, those spores... Really yeah. freak me out. Uh, it also, again, with the abyss, everything is chaotic. What you think it might do is not necessarily my, what it is going to do. I don't see this guy looking fungal. He doesn't look like spores or anything like that. And spores are absolutely a thing that you do see based on a couple of demonic lords. But like, he doesn't seem to have that inherent in him. At least not to look at him. But no. yeah, I, I mean, and it's... It's a pretty good ability, actually. Rather than it being like a once a day that we saw with some of the other creatures, this is a recharge of six. So, you know, once it's used, obviously there's a fairly low chance it's going to get to use it again. But even if it does get it out just once, and again, considering this is a challenge rating six, you may see these in small groups or maybe individually. Um, It's a con save or poison damage at the start of each of your turns. Like... It, it's a pretty significant effect if you fail the con save. Yeah, and it's got multi-attack. It, the claws and the beak are not just for decoration, so this guy can still really pack a punch. Oh, yeah, and, you know, with, coupled with the fly speed as well, you know, anything that can get up in the air and then sort of dive bomb you is going to be instantly that little bit more of a threat than something of a similar strength that can't fly. Oh, yeah. Gotta look up, guys. We've said it before. (laughs) We'll be sure we will say it again. Guys, look up. Once Um, we start doing merchandising, we'll put it on a shirt. It'll just be like, Adventurer's Pack, look up. Look up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And then next we've got one of my personal favorites based almost entirely on the artwork alone. We've got the interestingly pronounced Cosme. Cosme, yeah. Cosme. So so we're going up a type. We're into uh, type two. um, And... So therefore, up in terms of challenge rating, in terms of power, in terms of just what they can do, uh, in terms of rarity as well. Um, these guys, of course, uh, kind of leaning hard into the sort of the the repulsiveness and disgusting side of the chaos of the abyss. It's essentially a giant mosquito. This here, Jeff Goldblum, is just really. <laughs> He's even kind of got the hair. See, as soon as you said that, I was like, you know what? Inwardly, I was like, you know what? There's even like a little bit of a Jeff Goldblum hairstyle there. Yeah! It's like the, with the comb bag and the kind of the expression. If he doesn't say um a lot, I'm going to be very disappointed. Is is this is this confirmation bias or is this deliberate? <laughs> I don't know. Tell us, Watsy. But uh, unlike uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, one of the most terrifying things this creature does is its drone. Um, oh, yes. Uh, I don't want to listen to this talk about various subjects on, no. on loop. Um, yes, this guy makes a really scary sound, and it can uh, kind of just confuse your noggin. Realistically, it... Um, I mean, to the point where it drops you unconscious if you fail the yeah. con save. Yeah. And you you need holy water to stop that? Yeah. Which That's is crazy. That's such a thing. That, like, I, I know I have played all various manner of uh, holy characters, and 
holy water, it, it comes up sometimes, but apparently a lot with, with your ye olde giant mosquito, that's what you need to stop the droning sound. Yeah, because um, you've, you, you, you've actually fought one of these, haven't you? I have, yes. We lost the barbarian, I think oh. it was, that went down, which was very odd. The, bo- the barbarian didn't make that con save, and the barbarian went down, which was hilarious, but also just super irritating because it's large. That's the other thing. Looking at this artwork, it's a large bug. It is bigger than a person. It's as big so, as a horse. Yeah, so it's just kind of crawling around and buzzing around you, and it's irritating beyond belief, which also goes into the lore of this guy a little bit. They are specifically used as hunters to pull things back from deals that have been reneged upon, and Mm. they're there to torture you. So in a weird way, I actually think the irritating nature of them is incredibly tortuous. Yeah, and... I think that's also reflected in the artwork with that kind of chitinous insect, like almost indifferent look in the in the the facial features as well. It has the look, of, and obviously that enormous you know facial proboscis thing. You know, it has the look of just the cruelty and the malice and the indifference that we might associate with you know the horror of the abyss. Ugh, no, thank you. No, thank. you. Alright, and then I think that brings us on to the last entry in type 2. For today. For today. The Hezru. The the Hezru. Hezro, I I think it's... uh, Oh, Hezro. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, ultimately, does pronunciation in D&D matter? Probably not. Is it fun to discuss? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to be right, but alternatively... Pronounce it however makes you happy. But yeah, Hezro, Hezro makes sense to me, especially with the U at the end there. Uh, we've got a giant toad now. Yeah, it's a, it's a bipedal, uh, big, hulking, spiny monster toad. Yeah. And what if, again, going with just the theme that the abyss is gross. The abyss is just dank and gross. This guy, one of his characteristic features is that he is smelly. Mm. Which seems to be one of the few consistent themes that we're encountering in Demon Kind. They, of course. Uh, yeah. The, the. <laughs> Just the general sense of bleh. And looking at him, he looks pretty bleh. He, unlike a lot of toad art that we see in here, I, I keep going back to toad because of the shape of his head, but he doesn't look wet. He no. does look like he's got those bulbous growths along him, but he doesn't look wet. If anything, he looks like he'd be like rough and scaly rather than slimy. More like shark skinny. Yeah, yeah. And the color, the expression on him, everything about him looks like he's coming after you to to grab you and like pick you up and eat you and throw it in that gaping maw. Just like tear you to pieces. Him and his lack of neck. Oh, just straight into the shoulders there. Uh, and this guy's a foot soldier, which yeah. the muscles on that really show that this guy is... We're taking a dip back down in intelligence again. So this, these yeah. guys are typically used by higher demon lords to just overrun stuff. They're just... Yes. C- well. Certainly the most threatening, or one of the most threatening we've looked at so far. Challenge rating of eight, but yeah, in many ways, actually pretty straightforward. They're big, tough, mean, and stupid. They're going to be stinky. Yeah, and stinky. They're going to be sent in en masse by demons more powerful than them to just like crush, kill, destroy, um, and that's about it. Uh, I mean, even fighting just one of these guys on their own is going to be a, a problem if you, uh, you know, if you're uh, taking a trip down to Avernus or something and find yourselves on one of the plains of the Blood War and you see about a thousand of these guys coming your way, you're in trouble. That, I think, is actually the thing that is the most terrifying to me about these is that, yeah, you're right, challenge rating eight. Uh, but these guys are foot soldiers. You'd never, almost never see one of these on their own own this is something you're going to meet in a large pack yeah and of course most adventurers you know do what they do on the material plane most of the time so you know if there has been some kind of demonic incursion you're going to get a few of these that you might encounter but then the thing that's always you know if you know what's going on in the back of your mind going to be that that is only just the smallest hint of what the abyss and demon kind can really, really throw at you if they want to. 
Thanks again so much for joining us here at The Bestiary. We really appreciate the company. Uh, ring the bell down there to be notified of when we release new videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are always happy to grow the Adventurers Pack. And uh, yeah, leave us a comment. Would you rather be torn to pieces by a giant angry demon gorilla, a giant angry mosquito, or uh, a frog beast thing? Like, none of them are great options, but if you had to pick, which one? So yeah, join us next week where we continue to dive deeper into the abyss. And, uh, you know, take a look here where you can see some of the other videos we've produced. You might like them. We do. We sure do.